year of the jury and I'm sitting here with Ken Love from Fame, the Fruit Hunters documentary and the book. And he came all the way from Hawaii today to join us at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Yes, so. I did. It was great. <laughs> it's great. So today I'm going to ask Ken about durian. I know he has a lot of experience with other fruits and I'm sure he's got some great stories from his adventures with durian as well. So, Ken, um, when did you come across your first durian? Oh, my first durian? Pro probably uh, 20 some years ago in, in uh, Kuala Lumpur, I think, in Malaysia. Just walking down the street. I said, you know, I keep hearing. No, I take that back. It was 1988 in Singapore. Oh, wow. I, I just, yeah, just, um, just remember that. In fact, my, uh, really liked the durian and then we were walking around Orchard and Scott Street in Singapore where all the hotels and the shopping is and there's a little vendor on the corner selling durian ice cream too and so I went to get durian ice cream and my wife wouldn't cross the street until I finished it so <laughs> she's not so much a fan although she we have tried to make durian breads and cakes and process stuff with some of our fruit but there's nothing is as good as just fresh durian. Yeah. So did you like it right away? Oh yeah, I was addicted. I was hooked. So there's no uh, no middle of the road with durian. It's not something <laughs> you can just just uh, you, you either love it or hate it. Right. And so I was I was totally hooked. So I got to find the fresh stuff and more of it. And I I like the smell. I don't understand how people get turned off by the smell. Yeah. And even in the movie, well, it smells like a sewer. Or, it's it's not it's it's mystical the smell. That's I guess how I would des describe it. Yeah. I don't find it negative at all. Me neither. I never understand. I think it smells uh, like something that I want to eat. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> right away. Just, yeah, definitely. All right. So you grow some on your land, right? You took it yeah, home. we have we have a couple producing durian trees, and um, these are these are from seeds that um, um, I brought in. It was kind of funny. We went to Thailand, I don't know, almost 20 years ago, and um, get durian seeds, maybe 16 years, I think. And um, the, I'm um, going to, in Bangkok and just going to the stores, and they were, it was the height of durian season, and they're opening the fruit and taking out the sections and shrink wrapping them, and just pulling out the seeds and throwing them away. Oh my God, I, can't. I gotta go grab all the seeds. So, <laughs> They gave them to me for free, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd go back to the room and I'd wash off the seeds and package them and I have all the permits to bring it in, so that wasn't a problem. The next day, I'd go out and look for more and I'd come back and there was a note, Mr. Love, please, you cannot bring durian fruit into the hotel. Next, I'd have to wash all the ones that just came back, but then I'd leave a note, I did not bring any durian fruit into the hotel. <laughs> next day, same thing, three times. Then I get back to the room and I smell durian and uh, realize that, you know, having about 500 seeds smells just like the fruit. So it's, wow. But some of those seeds are what's producing now in, 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 in Hawaii. How many of them sprouted when you got that? Oh, almost all of them sprouted. They were um, uh, having sphagnum moss and just kept them a little moist but not too wet. And, mm -hmm. um, maybe 80% germinated. Wow. I mean, because uh, they were they were the good seeds. They weren't the aborted seeds that you get sometimes in sections. So right. um, it was pretty good. Yeah. We also went into the, the jungles. Um, I, I don't know exactly where we, we drove. I mean, it was a, quite a drive. I was there for another job, and so I just used that excuse to go durian hunting, if you will. <laughs> and they had um, um, all of the... Uh, just following the trucks along the, along the road, driving out of Bangkok for like oh, seven hours or something, and then slept at one place. The next morning, started looking. But along the road, all these just trucks piled high with rambutan and mangosteen, and every time they'd bump, the they, fruit would fall off in the street, and, and we'd have to compete with all the little kids running to pick up the fruit <laughs> and get wow, well, free mangosteen. You know, when they're eight bucks a piece and. Right. In, in the U.S., you know, free ones were looking pretty good. Pretty awesome. So, of course, it, later we found them for 10 cents a piece in Thailand. But anyway, it was, it was really good. When I get out there in the jungle to look for some other durian species in there, I, I, it hit me because I was just walking through this area, and I was told to be beware of snakes, which don't bother me. 
But then there was a sign that, please beware of the tigers. And I said, you know, maybe, maybe I need to be a, a little more careful. Yeah, especially tigers like durian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and cobras like jackfruit and tigers like durian. Yeah. That's, that's what I've learned. So. <laughs> be careful. Yeah. yeah. Healthy respect for nature. Do you sell any of your durian in Hawaii? Well, we, we uh, have a farmer's market every, um, every Saturday at Keoho Shopping Center. And... It's, you know, it's not consistent from year to year in Hawaii, so it depends on the elements and the rain and okay. heat and weather. And sometimes we'll have 60, 80 fruit one year, sometimes um, 12, 15 fruit, sometimes none. Wow. So I'll, well, I eat a lot of them and share it with, with friends that come through. Uh, when we have them, like last year we had, we had an abundance, and so we brought them to the farmer's market, and people were bidding them. Wow. I mean, oh, I'll give you three. Baseline is like thirty dollars for a nice size fruit. Mm-hmm. I sell them by the piece. I don't want to get into scales and weighing and all that. Right. So thirty. Oh, well, I'll give you fifty for it. Whoa. Well, you know. And he's... You know what? Are, what are you gonna do? So, um, people were paying fifty dollars for wow. durian. Is this mostly like people of like Chinese descent, or just normal? No, like actually, it just you know. There's a whole new generation like you who loves durian, and, and uh, um, but it's some some Chinese, some just people who have heard about it, or right. people who uh, you know old Vietnam vets who live in Hawaii who remember it from the '60s, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's you know it brings back memories to some, creates new memories to, uh, for others. But if you uh, if you had it and you like it, you you would do anything for it. Right. You know, it is like a drug. <laughs> you know, you do get a little euphoric from uh, from eating the durian. And um, in uh, other times, people call me up and they'll they'll reserve one, which which I can do. Right. Or if I only have a couple of them, we just have uh, I wait for everybody to come and we just have a tailgate party at the farmers market in the back of my truck, and everybody gets a little piece of durian <laughs> and share the like wealth. And, uh, so- you're saying that like everybody, you know, there's this new generation of people like me who love durian. Why do you think people don't like durian, or what is it you think it's a Well, the smell isn't thing? for everybody. Yeah. It's only really smart people that really like it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. sorry. No. <laughs> but, but your um, wife appreciates that. Yeah, no, I know. I'm going to hear about that one. So, <laughs> sorry, Mark. Uh, the, uh, uh, it, you know, it, it, there's a certain mis- mystique, you know, and if you've read history and you, you study different places, and you know, I grew up with listening to Lowell Thomas and, and different newscasters and early days of Life Magazine, and, well, not early, but Life Magazine in the 50s and National mm-hmm. Geographic, and um, I always wondered about those places, and textbooks in grade school showed pictures from from many countries that no longer exist, you know, and, and uh, uh, so I always had a certain fascination with this and, and with the pictures, so, right. you know, that's why I started in photography, is, you know, I wanted to, to go to these places and see for myself if this was really what looked like, if this is what the people would look like, if they had smiles like that, right. if they wore things that were three feet, you know, on top of their head <laughs> like that, you know, so it was always always kind of interesting um, and, and durian was a part of it I can then my grandmother she she traveled around the world in 1964 went to Tokyo wow. Olympics and I, I still have the slides she took in the river in Bangkok you know where they have all the fruit on, mm-hmm. the, on the boats and all that and I always wondered what that stuff was right so. Yeah, one thing I appreciate about the fruits is just that there's no other flavor like it. You know, like we can imagine what a rice dish might taste like, but with yeah. fruit, there's no guessing. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. I mean, people say, well, how do you describe the flavor of that, of, of many fruits, abiyu, chipotle, kava? You can't really describe durian or many of the other exotic tropical fruit in conventional terms. Yeah. And we've tried, and other scientists have tried to come up with flavor wheels like they have for wine. Uh-huh. When you do it with tropical fruit, oh, then it's just smart. impossible, you know. And so, yeah. I I can say it's like pudding or or Liederkranz or Limburger cheese, but it's not. I mean, it might have similar textures or some similarity in smell and taste, right. but 
It's not. It's totally different. And until you really experience it, it's not. It's not going to. Do you have a preference between the sweet and the bitter? No, they're just different, and I like them all. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not really fussy in that sense. So I, I haven't had a durian that I didn't like. Oh, that's good. I mean, the yeah. frozen and oh, could I say the same thing about mango and other fruit? They're, they're all different, but uh, I love diversity. I love the, yeah. the, the diversity of what we're eating and the diversity of, of uh, what we're growing. So do you think that durian has a future in Western markets? Oh, absolutely. Um, not only because of, of all the immigrants in Western society, who, 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 but um, because of the people who are exposed to it for the first time. Right. I mean, if I would, basically, if I was your age and I had 100 acres, I'd probably plant you know, 10 acres each of different species of durian. Really? Yeah. All day. I, mean, I think if I wanted to have a new type of commercial orchard, mm -hmm. I think that could be very profitable for somebody in right. the coming years. And does it concern you at all? I know like in um, Malaysia right now, they're replanting almost everything with Musang King or D24. Is that... Well, I think it's monocropping durian is just as bad as monocropping macadamia nuts or mm -hmm. palm oil trees or areca palms or anything else. I mean, it's monocropping that's dangerous to agriculture. Right. So they're looking to commercialize. Malaysia wants to commercialize their type of durian, just like Montong has already been done in Thailand. But that's, um, I think, the diversity is more important. And I think that's what what, what you you and others are doing is really important to educate people about the varieties of durian, about the um, what's the the uh, little red one. Graviolans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Graviolans is just an amazing little, you know. And, and it's, uh, well, it's kind of funny. We had um, a bunch of them I got from Frankie's, from Frankie's Nursery in Waimanalo on Oahu. Mm -hmm. And we had, we do these, um, I sometimes work as a chef at the Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. And I do an exotic fruit station when the PGA tournaments come, come to Hawaii or there's other, um, other uh, events. And so I can remember getting a couple of these you know, graviolins from Frankie's, and people were fighting for them. I mean, you know, top name golfers are fighting for a taste wow. of durian because they've heard of it, they never tried it. That was the first year. The second year, the first thing they come in, you, how many durian you bring this year? I don't have to fight with someone. <laughs> that's amazing. So yeah, I mean, once people understand it, and they're not, uh, you know, they're not being affected by. The, the, what the media says. So they can make up their own minds without external stimulation. And mm -hmm. uh, It's amazing how many people really tr like it. Do so you really think that's part of just like cultural, like being taught that we shouldn't like durian because it stinks? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, um, we have to, people have to make up their own minds right. and not succumb to the pressures from the media or other external society. That comes from being a media person for a lot of years. So, <laughs> yeah, because I've heard you know everyone saying that in Thailand and such that people, the younger generation, don't eat durian the way the older yeah. ones did, and they want their durian, you know, with less odor or less flavor or things like that. Yeah, there's, there's some of that. I mean, I can't imagine a. Uh, I keep hearing about this odorless durian uh -huh. that they're developing. Yeah. Why? <laughs> you know, I mean, the taste would have to be pretty spectacular, but the the odor, which I like. You know, is part right. of the experience. I mean, and it's not just eating to eat. It's, it's an experience. Yep. I mean, eating durian for the first time is a story. And, and so people who experience it that way, they go out and tell everybody about it. Man, it wasn't that bad, you know. It was right. really, you ought to try it sometime, you know. They may say it's god-awful, but chances are they won't. <laughs> you know, if they're not they're worried about being embarrassed or something, you know. Um, but... There's um, it, it's it's such a unique experience that people people joke about it and, and the word gets out and I think that's why it's it's spread so much. You know? Right. People travel so much more now than they used to. It seems like. Very and so there's a you know the story about David Fairchild and 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 Barbara Lathrop. No, I don't. Okay. So so D David um, Fairchild, a great botanist, you know who brought in hundreds of thousands, of, oh, I don't know how many, but thousands and thousands and thousands, maybe 20,000 fruit uh, into the U.S. as part of the plant introduction unit of the, as the USDA developed around the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And in part, the USDA and his, he was the original fruit hunter, if you will. And right. Part of, I mean, we wouldn't have broccoli or dates or, any, you know, pomegranates if it wasn't for David Fairchild, um, as well as hundreds of other ornamentals and edible plants. But he was in, in uh, Batavia, which is now Jakarta. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, with his the financier, Barbara Lathrop from Chicago, who, who financed a lot of the travels and the food hunting and bringing these things back. And um, Fairchild came, came, came back to the hotel one day and saw Lathrop in the lobby, and, and Lathrop turned to it and smelled, and, and the quote is something like, Fairy, if you bring one of those durian fruits near me, that's it. No more <laughs> finances. <laughs> so, oh, wow. I forget, but the the actual quotes in in the book that Fairchild wrote called "The World Was My Garden," which oh. was just an amazing book if you read, to read, yeah. and it, it talks about his his fruit hunts. Okay. You know, from from the late 1800s to the to the 30s, and the voyage of a Chinese junk when he was going in the in the 30s, but it was kind of stopped because of the the war starting. I always kind of wanted to finish, to get on a junk and go to the sail around the sail sh Seychelles and Solomons and finish that this that trip cool. looking for fruit. Me found tribes that, that lived off papaya leaves. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, you'll love this book. You okay, will definitely, definitely yeah, read it. Everybody would love this book. It's just, okay. just amazing. Do you have a particular, like, a, a favorite durian experience or memory you know, um, that was really special? Of e well, you know, after the movie, it was a, a lot of fun. You know, Bill Pullman lost his sense of smell, and so I kept sticking durian in his face. Just, you get it now? You get it now? And um, never, never got it. But he really liked the fruit, and as did all the members of the film crew who had only heard of it but never, right. never really experienced it. So I had I had reserved a bunch of durian, and at the end of the the movie. Um, when it was all wrapped up and they were going to the airport, went a couple hours early and we had this huge uh, tailgate party in the Kona Airport parking lot with uh, half a dozen durian, a nice big, right, perfectly ready durian. And you see people walking to the planes through the parking lot and they'd either go around the other way just to get away because <laughs> you could really, the smell was potent. Good for me, but potent. And then other people were, oh, durian, okay, they come flying over and not even knowing that Bill was there, but right. just to get, see if they could get a piece of durian. So it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. All right. Well, have you had any of the durian here? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, it's still, it's frozen, shipped in, so it's not going to be what fresh durian is. Um, so I've had better frozen, too, but it wasn't bad. I mean... Still durian, right? Pardon? Still it's durian. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, frozen durian's better than no durian. <laughs> I have each bag that they come in has that little blue uh -huh. uh, plastic tag and Hong Kong durian on it. Mm -hmm. So I've been collecting the ones I've ate. So I got three of them. I can wear them like, you know, badges on my <laughs> uniform or <Right. laughs> chef coat. And I can put all the little awards for, for durian, durian eating. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Ken. Oh, my pleasure. It's been yeah. great. Yeah. It's, it's really been great meeting you, and, and I've been following you, you know, on Facebook since the whole thing started. So it's just great. So we'll have to eat some for... durian later. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>